Uh, hello, yes, welcome to, uh, uh, a Dark Souls re-rant. Uh, why? Because I need to say that my opinions have changed. But first off, before the rant, uh, uh, just th thanks, thanks for the support with, with the last video. That, that, that helped, uh, a lot and, and it meant a lot and, yeah. Anyway, uh, so, if you had asked me about a month ago my thoughts on Dark Souls 1, I would have told you, it has merit, but it's very overhyped and not as good as 3. If you ask me today, it's a very solid game, but with just a hair too many little problems for me to love it. The, the one thing I want to get across with this video is that my thoughts and feelings about Dark Souls 1 have improved immensely. I still agree partially to what I said in the first rant, but my opinions changed. I can look at Dark Souls 1 and see what makes it good, what makes people want to play it, what makes people say it's their favorite game. Uh, but I, I don't know how it happened, because during the first YouTube playthrough, I wasn't having fun at all. There were drops of fun and an ocean of frustration. But something clicked during this last playthrough. Something happened where I understood where the fun of Dark Souls 1 comes from. It's it's not the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. It's overcoming a challenge. Seeing a tough section or boss and getting through it. That is the fun of Dark Souls 1. In, in the first rant, I talked about what I like to call Dark Souls moments. If you forgot what a Dark Souls moment, it's uh, when you level up, get a lot of souls, beat a hard area, beat a hard enemy, beat a hard boss, get an upgrade, or find a bonfire. Now, th these are still the fun of the game, but I... I forgot about one. Using the Zweihander. In in both YouTube playthroughs, I used the exact same build, which was mostly just this Vihander and Grass Crush Shield, which work really well together, by the way. I didn't realize it the first time, but using this Vi and learning how to use it, that was the fun I had in Dark Souls 1. With, with my other attempts at the game, I used smaller, faster weapons. This, this could work for some, but... Not for me, especially not in Dark Souls 1. It wasn't until the third attempt that I even tried a stronger weapon, the Claymore. And that worked amazingly, it worked really well, but not good enough. It 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 didn't have the pure damage of this Vi, but not the speed of other weapons. And I was still dying. I, I still wasn't having fun. But this Vi Hander changed that for me. It really did. It made combat fun. It made Dark Souls fun, but I couldn't see that. I was looking at the game the wrong way. I, I was looking at it as, as, this area isn't fun, the next area isn't fun, nor the next. The next area is arguably the worst in the whole series, and I guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Uh, another, uh, another crappy area. I love it. And, and, uh, but that's wrong. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Dark Souls 1 isn't the fun of the game. It's improving. It's overcoming the challenge of the game to become to become good. To get good, as they say. But! There are still things that I despise in Dark Souls 1. They, things that if they weren't in the game, I would actually like the game. But, oops! They are, and it makes the game feel awful. There, there are three main things that I hate in Dark Souls 1. The first, it's, it's the mid-roll. The mid-roll is terrible, and, and I hate it. And I, I can use it. It, it, it doesn't, it, it's not awful, or it, it, it is awful. I can use it. I know how to use it. I, I I agree to the terms and conditions of the mid roll. It's it's not good. It's not. It's just meh. Next is still the fact that you can't move while healing. Like, come on, Horus. There, there there's a giant demon coming to kill you, and if you take two se steps to the left, they won't die. Come on. But, but like, I, 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 I can deal with the 40 rolling and, and the healing. You, you get used to them, 
The thing that actually kills the game for me is the 4D rolling. What is 4D rolling, you ask? Well, when you're not locked on, you can roll in all the directions. It's fine, that's fine. But when you're locked on, some genius at FromSoft said, Hey, 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 let, let's make it so that when, you, when, when, when you're locked on, you, you can only roll in four directions. Good idea, sir, you want to race? And uh, the, the, the 4D rolling is the main thing that makes combat in Dark Souls feel awkward. It's the thing that kills the game for me. You, you don't always notice it, but when you do, oops! You, you could try to roll forward through an enemy's attack, but a little to the right so that when you get up, you can smack him in the butt. But Because of the 4D rolling, oops! You're right in their torso and you die, oops! There are things that I do really, really like about Dark Souls 1, and I, I, I alluded to it earlier, but the Zvi is extremely fun to use. The, the timing of the Zvi, it, it, it takes some getting used to, but it works. It works really well. Here, here's how the average fight would go with the Zvi. I see the enemy, enemy sees me, I'm about 15 feet away, but I know that the enemy is going to use an attack to close the distance. I preemptively hit attack, enemy uses attack to close the distance, they got they get caught out by the spy, one shot, I win. That is the fun of the spy. When an enemy tries to hit you, but you stop them dead in their tracks and one shot them. If only they had some poise. Speaking of poise, that's another thing in Dark Souls 1 that I enjoy. In Dark Souls 3, it does nothing. In Dark Souls 1, it works. It just works. And having a high poise feels good. It feels great when an enemy tries to hit you, but your poise is, is really high, and you just tank it. It feels great. Like, tanking damage in Dark Souls 1 actually works. It doesn't in 3. If you get hit, oops. Oops, you get staggered. But in this game, if you got poise, well, you're pretty much good. And that that is how I learned to, to enjoy the game. Make my own playstyle. Just have a big weapon, and don't take nothing from nobody. Once I did that, I had fun. But also make, also being familiar with the game and how it works. And, and also the Zvi, that makes a difference. Also bosses, there were three that I actually enjoyed fighting. Most of them, most of them were meh, but three were good. Bronze Metal goes to Sif. Sif is a fun fight, he's got cool lore. And he's just a good dog. That's mostly what I have to say. Fun fight. I like Sif. Uh, it's a cool fight. Doggy with a sword. What's, 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 what's not to like? Next, the Four Kings. Silver medal goes to the Four Kings. M mostly because with the Zvi, I had a really high DPS, and that's what the fight is. It's just a DPS test. If you have a low DPS, you're not going to like this fight. But if you can do a lot of damage, ooh, baby, it's fun. And, and... And uh, the, the feeling of killing one of the kings before another one shows, it feels like you're saying, BRING ME ANOTHER KING TO KILL! It's, it's euphoric. Now, my favorite boss might turn some heads. He, he doesn't have the extreme difficulty of, say, Ornstein or Smo, or the lore of the Lord Soul bosses, or the theme of the Gwyn fight. Nah, he's none of that. It's the Iron Golem, baby! It's my favorite boss. My favorite boss in Dark Souls 1 is the Iron Golem. You may be asking why? Well, I'll tell you why. PERSONALITY! I find it funny when he falls down and he's like, Oh no! I've fallen down! Oh, woe is me! What am I going to do? Okay. Time to get up! Ah, jeez, I can't get up! Man, this is not my day at all. No, I've been killed. I, I, I like the fight, and it, it's it's also it's also a pretty easy fight. So that's that's something. But I like fighting the Iron Golem. But the worst boss, the one I struggled with the most, the one that made me tired of playing, it's freaking Gwyn Lord of Cinder. I hate him. I hate everything about him. Music is good though, but everything else is. Pain.
painful. It took me about 40 or so minutes to beat him, and that is way more than any of the other bosses. Eventually, I got so tired and annoyed that I just said screw it and wore the full Havel set. I'm not proud of that, but it happened. Nothing can change that, and I blame it all on the run back. The run back on Gwyn is like a quarter mile. It takes so long, and you just want to die doing it. If the run back was something similar to, say, Soul of Sinner or Nameless King, I don't know from. But the feeling of walking for two or three minutes just to try and parry that first attack, fail miserably, die, and then going all the way back to the start, it's painful. But isn't that what Dark Souls is about? Dark Souls is a game about an impossible challenge and overcoming it by either getting good at the game or outsmarting the game. On paper, Gwyn is the perfect send-off to the game. He's hard. He's really hard. He's nearly impossible. But even though he's hard, he has a weakness. Very hard to exploit weakness, but a, a, weak a weakness nonetheless. Everything about Gwyn is what Dark Souls is about. The dying world he's in, the sad theme of the fight, the pure difficulty of the fight. That is what Dark Souls is about. And a after the first YouTube playthrough and rant, I said that I hated the game. Not because it was bad, but because the good was impossible to get through because of, because of the bad. Now I see that the game has good in it. You don't have to look hard. It's not the challenge itself, like Dark Souls 3, but overcoming the challenge and rising above it. I said that I was never going to touch the game again, but now I know that in, in the future, I will replay the game. Not today nor tomorrow, but soon. And hey, who knows? Maybe I'll play Dark Souls 2. And maybe I'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching. And subscribe.